I do think there is nothing in beauty that equals Chatsworth, though I like a number of places better. I believe if I had a son, I should like it best of all. But there is something in its not being my children's that makes me fancy it is not mine. I would urge everyone who's interested in Georgina to come to Chatsworth and see the portraits of her, see her rock collection, the lock of her hair that remains, uh, the fabric of the building and its contents, and then they'll understand what it was like to be someone as beautiful and as famous and as clever and emotional as she was in the 18th century. The wonderful thing about this film featuring scenes filmed here at Chatsworth is that this building was Georgina's home. It belonged to her husband, the fifth Duke. And although a lot of their social life was spent in London, their house in London, they spent many, many parts of each year here at Chatsworth. It makes a huge difference um, actually being in the houses, seeing the spaces, um, knowing how they echo, knowing how cold they are, because they are absolutely freezing. And, you know, it, it does kind of, it changes. It's, it's very different to playing something in a studio. You know, you, you really get a sense of, of where these people were, of, of the, the scale that they lived in, the reality of that. Um, so, so yeah, and, and they're absolutely stunning, you know, I mean, really, really stunning. So it's always nice to kind of take a trip around England and actually see these places that I wouldn't normally get to see. This is incredible. There's a castle in Ireland, Bolton Abbey, Chiswick, Burlington, and, why, and Chatsworth, of course. Of course. Which is much bigger. <laughs> but this is more like home. <laughs> we talked about a sort of 18th century bling where uh, we looked for as much John Adams architecture as we could possibly find, which is very clean and very, you know, like pure neoclassical, and removed a lot of the extraneous stuff so that it was a very sparse, sort of minimal, kind of footballer's house of its day. I think to shoot in real locations where the real, the real fabric of the time is around you is, is fantastic. There's obviously the room you're shooting in, but just around corridors, corners, bookshelves, paintings, gardens, vistas, ceilings, decorate all those little things, you know, you, you soak them up. Just the space people walked in, the height of ceilings, the double doors opening, I mean, the sheer space that, that someone of that sort of, of position lived their life in is just does, does something to you imaginatively. So when we're approached about a film, the first condition we put down is we have to remain open. Once the film company accepts that premise, then we have no problems at all. They're just logistical issues. Um, 200 candles being lit in a room, a bit unexpected, but we've got around that, we've come up with a way of making it safe and look beautiful. And the irony is, of course, that actually the problem about being open is that visitors are probably more interested in watching a film being made than they are in just going around the stately home. Every time we turn up in a new location, it's always a bit of a challenge, it takes a little while to find ourselves. Well, you've got tapestries, you've got paintings that are some as old as 400 years old. They, they're very sensitive to light, uh, ultraviolet light especially. And the floors are very old, you see we've got tennis balls in all our, all our stands. Just a bit of respect. They're very sensitive once we, uh, we turn up all these trucks, guys swinging stands and flags around and they're naturally nervous. But once they see that we're, we're doing the right thing, we, we, we very much respect everything that they have. They've got us in their house and, and uh, we, have to, uh, we have to look after it. Otherwise, people behind us don't get invited back. Michael Carlin's done an incredible job, though, of really bringing the 18th century back into those places because, you know, Chatsworth now is this, well, probably one of the more popular tourist destinations in England. We're privileged to be working in a locked off space, but you sort of leave that space and there you're really back in the 21st century with all of the tourists and in a sense, you know, it does feel like a museum. But he actually managed to take us back and bring in all of those things that just made it just really feel like we were taking a step back. The biggest challenge in terms of um, locations was trying to recreate Devonshire House. This you know, big, austere, slightly prison-like fortress. And we wanted to recreate that out of real houses. So we did that through putting together probably about two or three houses, but two main houses. The, the first one is Kettleston Hall, which has got that extraordinary um, ballroom and particular kind of look 
and we put that together with Holcomb Hall in Norfolk. So we were able to create this kind of austere but beautiful bachelor pad for a duke. The filming we're doing inside is representing um, a London ball. Um, you'd entertain your tenants and you'd focus on your country hospitality. So Chatsworth was the base where that happened, but Devonshire House in London was where the Whig party met. London streets actually are a difficult thing to find and Greenwich really, in London, is one of the only places that you really can manage to make it work. We're here in front of Greenwich Naval College in the heart of London and today it has been recreated as a street scene where Georgina and the Duke of Devonshire are going to ride in triumph. I'm Michael Carlin, I'm the uh, production designer on The Duchess and we're outside the old Vic uh, Theatre in Bristol where we're filming uh, a scene in the film which is based on the performance of the School for Scandal. So this is the main auditorium and a big negotiation about candles because obviously we're in an old wooden building and uh, they don't like candles at all and we obviously need a, a lot of them. We were very fortunate because actually they were closing down to renovate the theatre. So we've really been able to take it over completely and it really is an 18th century jewel of a theatre. We're filming um, a scene in which the Duchess and the Duke are going to see School for Scandal, which Sheridan wrote actually as a parody on their marriage. The set on the stage is actually is based on the set from School for Scandal, which was the library at Devonshire House. And the most sort of obvious space in, in our Devonshire House is the Marble Hall at Kettleston. And so this is a, a kind of theatrical version of that. So the audience of the film should know they're looking at Devonshire House, just as the audience of School for Scandal knew they were looking at the inside of Devonshire House when they saw the play. If ever I try to be friends with you anymore, that these people sort of walk through these halls and these things happened in these rooms. Um, so there's something very sort of visceral and exciting about that. It's really just about the timescales that you're working with to try and do two days' work in several hours overnight and then get it back to what it needs to be like when the public arrive.